us? Yes. Let's begin. Okay, let me share my screen. Can you see my presentation? Is that true? Yes. Yes. No, that's perfect. Today we're gonna talk about ten, ten phrases in English, of course, that we probably use in our work. So the first one, okay, trabajar es una oficina donde se habla inglés puede ser difícil si el inglés no es tu lengua materna, okay. Así que vamos a aprender hoy día 10 frases y luego nos vamos a la plataforma. La primera es 24-7, okay. Esta frase significa continuamente o todo el tiempo. En español la tenemos como 24-7. 24-7. Yes, but in English, 24-7. Okay, for, well, what do you do on the week? Well, you know, I work 24-7. Trabajo todo el tiempo. I can go because I work 24-7. Please read the example. Oh, really? You're working 24-7 to practice. Yes, okay. You need to train 24-7 to improve your English. Okay. Remember that trabajar, we say work. Work. It's not work. Say work. work. Yes. Work. Yes. Work. Next. Number two. Can of worms. The can of worms es una expresión que se usa para describir una situación que puede ser peligrosa o difícil. Casi siempre se usa la expresión con el verbo open. Okay. Let's note open that can of worms, it could cause a lot of trouble for us. No abramos esa lata de gusanos, podremos de traducirla. Darling, I don't want to open a can of worms, but I found a woman's phone number in your pocket. ¿Cómo podrías traducir este can of worms? In Spanish. We don't have an expression like that, I think. Nido de ratas es como por ejemplo, oye, como que mmm, evitemos hablar de eso. Ok, te digo, let's not open that can of worms. Nos puede traer problemas, como que no abramos ese tema. O no saquemos los trapitos sucios, se podría decir también. Let's not open that can of worms. Ok, it could be. Pero siempre se usa con open. No abramos la lata de, de gusanos. Ok, let's not open that can of worms. Or I don't want to open a can of worms. Did you understand? Yes, I think we don't have an expression in Spanish for that one, right? Yes, up to speed. Esta expresión la podremos traducir como ponerse al corriente. O sea, informarse acerca de algo. Esta expresión se usa con la palabra get para informarte del proceso acerca de algo. Por ejemplo, dice, you'll need to get up to speed on the financial situation before you can make an important decision. Uh, another expression that we use in American English, we can use that one, no but. Can you see the no but? Yeah. Okay, so you, you understood that this expression, yeah? need to, need to speed, up to speed, get up, up to speed, get up to speed. So, for example, you can say, I need, I need to catch, catch up with, catch up with you, I need to keep up with. Keep up with the new technology. Uh, I we need to catch up with another expression. We need to we need to catch up. Okay, focus on this. Catch up with you. Quiere decir, um, por ejemplo, nosotros estudiamos juntos en la escuela, pero yo he faltado, así que tú estás más adelantada que yo, cierto? Porque yo no estaba en clases. Mm -hmm. I need to catch up with you. I need to catch up with, with the homework. A ver, aquí está, con esto. Homework. Ahora se entiende mejor. With the homework. Necesito. 
No puedes ver el notepad. Let's share the screen again. Let me share the screen again. Now, can you? Yeah. Okay. It says, I need to catch up with the homework. Porque tú estás más adelantada que yo. Perdón, no he hecho la tarea. Tengo que ponerme al... Al corriente. Sí. Al corriente. Al día. Exacto. Catch up with... Ponerse al día. Cuando digo, we need to catch up, nosotros necesitamos ponernos al día pero para contarnos nuestras cosas. Ok, de repente te encuentras con Pepita. No la has visto hace ocho semanas. Well, oh, we need to catch up. Ok, ponernos al corriente de todas las cosas que nos han pasado. Si pones catch up with, tienes que ponerte al corriente con algo. Puede ser I need to catch up with the tasks, with the reports. Con los reportes, tengo que ponerme... Al corriente con los reportes, con las actividades, with the activities. ¿Ok? Or we need to catch up with something. ¿Ok? okay. And then keep up with. For example, I don't, use, I don't usually have a computer because I don't like computers. I prefer to write on a piece of paper. But for my mother, it's really difficult to keep up with the new technologies. She doesn't know how to use a computer. Ponerse al tanto de las nuevas tecnologías. Ponerse al corriente. Actualizarse. Okay. I need to keep, to keep up with you. Keep up with you también es seguirte el ritmo. Keep up with you. Necesito seguir el ritmo contigo. En todos los sentidos, ya sea figurado... O literalmente. Por ejemplo, estamos en una competencia de carreras. Tú estás una cuadra más adelante que yo. I need to keep up with you. Necesito seguirte el, el ritmo. ¿Ok? Tú has escrito ocho libros y he escrito solamente tres. I need to keep up with you. Necesito seguirte el ritmo. Ahora... Keep up with a new technology es seguirle el ritmo a las tecnologías. Did you understand? Ponerme al tanto de... Yes. With the news, of course. Next word, bottom line. The bottom line es una expresión literaria que se usa para referirse a la última línea de un estado de cuentas. Donde, si hay ganancias, donde dice si hay ganancias o pérdidas. También significa la conclusión o el factor decisivo. Por ejemplo, the bottom line is that we need to raise prices. La conclusión final es que necesitamos elevar los precios. ¿Ok? Eso es the bottom line. You got it? Yes. Ok. Next. Muscle. Muscle. Se refiere a poder o, o fuerza. Por ejemplo, The company's success is due to their marketing muscle. El éxito de la compañía es debido a su poder de marketing. To their marketing muscle. Brainstorming. This, this word is pretty common nowadays because everyone yeah. is working with this word. <laughs> yes, lluvia de ideas. Ok, the team got together to brainstorm the project para generar una lluvia de ideas del proyecto, to brainstorm. Ok. And, ok, one second. Yes, is that, is that all? Yep. Next. Thank you. Networking. Así se conoce a la habilidad de conocer gente y aumentar tu lista de contactos. El ser networked Significa estar bien conectado. The conference next week will be a good chance to do some networking. Ah, networking, hacer, hacer, conocer gente y aumentar tu lista de contactos. Eso se llama to do networking. Okay, for example, you need to create a LinkedIn account to network. You see? 
give and take is another expression that we use a lot. This expression we use when we want to make a deal, okay? Hay que llegar a un punto medio, ni para ti, ni para mí. Cada lado gana algo, pero también cede en otros puntos. The final deal was a compromise. It was an ideal, but you have to give and take. Tienes que dar y tomar. Lo traduzco como, uh, por ejemplo, when we bargain, ¿saben lo que es bargain? Bargain. Bargain is, for example, how much is that? And you say, well, it's $10, dollars But I have nine dollars. No, sorry, eight dollars. Uh, it's too cheap. Nine point five dollars. Okay, give and take. Tú dices diez dólares, yo te digo ocho, y tú me dices nueve. Okay, give and take. You see what I'm saying? Llegamos a un punto medio de la negociación. No win or win-win situation. Una situación no win. Es cuando no hay un buen resultado para nadie y todos pierden. Y una situación win-win es todo lo contrario. Fair trade is a win-win situation because both procedures and consumer benefit. Es a win-win. For example, you need, to, you need to travel to another country and you want to buy tickets, but the tickets are overpriced. And then I need to I need to sell my tickets because I can travel. But you want to go, and now the tickets are overpriced. We give and take. Listen, we give and take, and it's a win-win, you know, because I will I will I will I will like sell the ticket, not overpriced, just a little bit, and you won't pay overpriced, just a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, that's true. Next, push, push the envelope. Envelope is like... Uh, folder Manila? Mm -hmm. Let's share the screen. Have you ever seen the Folder Manila? Sure. Yes, I want to. Ah, you work with... <laughs> and... Yes, this one. This one, but this is not... This one, okay? Let's continue. So push the envelope. Esta frase significa que hagamos las cosas inteligentes, creativas e innovadoras que otros no han hecho. Our firm won't survive unless we are pushing the envelope. Si no estamos generando ideas innovadoras, innovadoras y creativas. Okay? So, trata de usar cada una de estas frases en inglés de negocio para hablar en tu trabajo y ve los útiles que son. Ok, do you have any questions? ¿Alguna consulta? ¿Alguna duda? No, right? De todas las 10 expresiones, dos que te acuerdes y cómo se usan. Ok. For example, a ver, yo te voy a decir uno y tú me dices, 24-7 es a más. Esa ya lo debes saber. You are supposed to know that. 24-7. Can you make a sentence? Yes. Uh, in, our, in, in our office, we work 24-7. Yes, you work 24-7. Maybe that's an exaggeration because that's not true. Nobody works 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 yes. that's not true, but, but yes. I think that. Yes, but, but you can say that in English. Yeah. You're emphasizing. Um, next, another word probably you know. Brainstorm. What is brain? Can you make a sentence? Mm. Okay. This meeting is to 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 brainstorm. To brainstorm is not necessary to say to do a brainstorm. It's to brainstorm. Okay. Brainstorm means generar yeah. ideas. You with ideas. Okay. okay. This meeting was scheduled for brainstorm. Okay, I would like to I would like to to explain a little bit about four and two. And yes, this is a common misconception. Can you see my screen? Can you see well the notepad, of course? Yes. Let me make this kind of bigger because 
Okay, 28, I think that would be enough. Can you see? Yes. Oh, sure. Let me make it bigger. Okay, remember, this is the gerund. The gerund in English is when we add ing. And we practice this rule. Do you remember it? Well, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, does, consonant, etc., etc. There are some rules when we can use the gerund. The gerund is really important because these provide us with a lot of ideas to express our opinion. Let's uh, start with this one. Number one, we use the gerund. We use the gerund always after prepositions. But Carlos, what are prepositions? Do you remember? On, in, at, about, for, among others. Okay? Among among others, what does that mean among others? And they all does. Okay. Gerund after prepositions. For example, how do you say Yo soy bueno en inglés? I I am good at Yes, you need to remember that there are some adjectives that are followed by some prepositions. In this case, good always work with at. But now, look at this. Yo soy bueno en inglés. I am good at English. Yo soy bueno hablando inglés. How do you say that in English? I am good talking. I am good at I speak English. Yes. Ah, remember, gerund after prepositions. So I uh, speak. Speaking. Speaking. Okay. Next. Number two. Did you understand the first one, right? Yes. Yes. Number two. We use the gerund. Oh, well, look at the situation. Look at the situation. I. I like. Okay, well. A gerund after certain verbs. For example, like, love, enjoy, what else? Help, but it's not just help, you say can help, among others. For example, how do you say, me encanta, me encanta el helado. O me encantan las frutas. How do you say me encantan las frutas? I love fruits. I love. I love fruits. But how do you say me encanta comer frutas? I love. love eating fruits. Eating fruits. Because remember that we use the gerund after certain verbs. Recuerda que usamos el gerundio después de cierto... ¿Qué? ¿Tengo que aprendérmelos? Yes. Poco a poco. Hoy acabas de conocer cuatro. Ok. Next. Y ahora sí viene el tema del de el otro más. Look at this example. I like... I like playing soccer. Look at this. I like playing soccer. ¿Qué regla estoy usando? ¿La 1 o la 2? What rule am I using? One or two? La 2. Number two, because... Ah, Carlos me dijo que si voy a poner un verbo después de like, tengo que ponerle ing. Listo. En este caso, what is the subject? Or oh, which word is the subject? I. I. Perfect. Like is that? What is like? The bird. And playing soccer is the... Is the object, right? Me gusta jugar football. Now, como diría, jugar football es divertido. Now, ahora, ah, jugar football, play soccer is play fun. Soccer. Play uh -huh. soccer is fun. Mi pregunta es, este play... Funciona como objeto, pero es que está siguiendo el verbo, le pongo ING. Cuando el verbo, listen, cuando el verbo, when the verb, uh, 
is the subject, we use the gerund. En este caso, ¿cuál es mi sujeto? Jugar fútbol es divertido, mi sujeto es jugar fútbol. Entonces, ¿qué hago? Playing Play. soccer is fun. Did you understand? Yes. Siempre que quieras usar un verbo como sustantivo, vas a tener que agregar ing. Ahora, you told me, this meeting, uh, this meeting was to, no, was for brainstorm. Was the schedule for brainstorm. For brainstorm. Was the schedule for brainstorm. What is the mistake? For brainstorming. Okay. It was okay if you say this this meeting was scheduled to brainstorm. Carlos, is to a preposition? Yes. To is the preposition, but this is the exception. Es la excepción. Okay? Okay. Puedes decir tú o puedes decir for con un verbo con ing. For example, quiero decir, compré esta casa para vivir. I, I bought this house to live. To live or, también puedo haber dicho. Or, for for living for living escribí esta carta para para contarte algo i wrote this I letter, wrote this letter. for For telling you. Or I wrote this letter to. To tell you. To tell you something. To tell you something. Did you understand? Yes. Pero en la vida real. One second. Okay. Pero en la vida real. Tenemos que pensar un poquito. Ok, focus on this part. Vamos a traducir lo siguiente. Tu para, cuando signifique con la finalidad de, lo vas a poner así. In order to, or so as to. Y cuando sea tu para para cualquier otra cosa, utilizas tú o utilizas for. Ahora, cuando es propósito. Ahora, cuando es para alguien... También tenemos que pensar, puede ser tú y puede ser for, pero pensamos, ¿ok? Hasta aquí estamos a la par un poquito más o menos, mira. Por ejemplo, sí. tú me dijiste, la the meeting was scheduled to brainstorm. Aquí voy a poner brainstorm, que es el verbo, brainstorm, ¿cierto? Y decido si es. Ahora, uh -huh. la reunión fue agendada para... Hacer lluvia de ideas, ¿cierto? Entonces, fue con el propósito, sí, pero tenía una finalidad, ¿cierto? Entonces, en lugar de decir un tú simple, como te expliqué, o un for, lo que aquí podrías poner era in order to. In order to. Entonces dirías, la reunión fue agendada con la finalidad de realizar una lluvia de ideas. Okay. Si no quieres usar in order to... Utilizas un so as to. Además de que estás explicando ¿no? con la finalidad de, suenas un poco más educada. Ahora, Carlos, aquí también otras palabras difíciles, ¿no? Um, educated. Educated es una persona educada, pero que, que recibió educación. educación. Y una persona polite, polite es una persona educada que tiene modales. 
sino que los estudiantes cuando le digo, ah, es que suenas es educado. No, no es que suenas cortés, sino que suenas preparado polite. académicamente. No, no suenas polite, sino que suenas educated. Ah, ok. Por ejemplo, mi amigo Pepito. Mi amigo Pepito. Yes, you, ah, you know the word polite, because yeah, eres muy educada, yeah. eres muy educada, well, do you mind, please, magic words, this is polite. My, my boss always told me that, uh, after the, the email, please be polite. Please be polite, of course, yes, polite, polite. But educated is that when you read a lot, when you go to the college, when you go to high school, this is educated, yes, you can be educated. And you can be polite, but, but polite. you know, yes, of course, some people are educated, but not polite, okay? Now, focus on this, uh, up to this point, it's okay, I'm educated, con la finalidad, in order to, so as to, and to, con propósito, but para alguien, what is the difference? Focus on this. Carlos, look at this. And the sun is good, I'm oh, sorry. The sun is good. It's good for the plants. And and you are and my son. Sorry, the sun is is important. Let me change. It's important for the plants. And my son is important to me. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Of course, you can you can say it's important to or it's important for me. Yeah, you are important for me. You're important to me. Yeah, both can be possible. But if we study grammar, we can realize that when you when you get something, when you get something, or when you take advantage, or when you get a benefit, something is important for you because you get a benefit. But if you don't, it's important to you. For example, the sun is important for the plants. Why? Because the sunlight make the plants make the plants to to what? To produce yeah. oxygen, right? And whatever in their food. Porque yes. producen sus alimentos. La, el sol es importante para las plantas. No porque las plantas las aprecien, sino porque obtienen algo de ella. ¿Tú obtienes algo de tu hijo? No. Por lo tanto, your son is important to, to you. So maybe you are talking to your boss and then you say, ah, oh, this is because you are important for the project. Eres importante para el proyecto. Para mí no lo eres. No te valoro. Pero sin ti no podemos terminar el proyecto. Did you understand the difference between important for or important to? Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. Any questions up to this point? No. Oh, that's great. So remember these words. Uh, they are very useful in English in order to and so as to. Yes. And now I have an... Any questions? No, right? Yes. That's great. Yours? Yes. Let's share the screen again. And now you can see the website. Can you, we go to Business English? Do you check it out just in case? No. Okay, you didn't. Don't worry. Okay, let's start with these words. Okay, let's begin with this part. I love this. Inglés en la oficina o frases, phrases to sound more professional, okay? So, usas el inglés en la oficina, no te pierdas estas frases si quieres sonar más profesional y super polite con tus coworkers superiores en reuniones al teléfono. Let's begin. Imagínate que alguien te pregunta algo y no sabe la respuesta. ¿Qué dirías? Don't say. Te dicen, hey, do you know how to dial a number abroad on these phones? Do you know how to dial? Dial is the action when you press the button, of course. Abroad is, 
is it the hashtag and then plus I'm not sure. Sorry, I don't know. Y la otra persona, thank you very much for nothing. You see, sorry, I don't know. En lugar de decir sorry, I don't know, dile, let me get back to you on that one. Let me get back to you on that one. Lo puedes traducir de la siguiente manera. Uh, do you have that now? Uh, but good, that's a good question. Let me get back to you on that one. Es como que, dame un momento. Dame un ratito. Y ahorita veo cómo te ayudo. Lo que se trata es que no decir no, no sé. Sino fingir aunque sea que le vas a ayudar. Para generar rapport. El rapport, por ejemplo, es cuando le caes bien a la gente. ¿Ok? Ese es el rapport. So, let me get back to you on that one. En lugar de decir, no, sorry, I don't know. Muy... Now, let me get back to you on that one. That's, an, that's a good expression. ¿Ok? Y me dice, hey, uh, do, can you tell me where the bathroom is? And then, well, I don't know where the bathroom is. Oh, let me get back to you on that one. I'll be right back. Y nunca más regresas, pero me mentiste. Aunque sé, tú no cool. You got it? Okay. Yes, of course. Frases para hacer una petición. Necesitas un pequeño favor y quieres evitar a toda costa que tu petición suene como orden. Y si quieres sonar extra polite, un truco es usar los models. Por ejemplo, this is Carlos. Are you busy? Not really. I was just about to go on a break. Please do me a favor. All right, what is it? I need to borrow your computer for a moment. Okay, I'll go and grab a coffee with, while you do that. Order me a note milk latte, please. Of course, anything else. En lugar de usar el please do me a favor, sí, pero estoy diciendo please, eso no es polite. Yes, pero es como que, es como el can. Por ejemplo, a ver, te voy a enseñar aquí. Eso es lo chévere de tener temas libres. Can you see my, my notepad? Yes. Ok, por ejemplo, yo te digo, uh, can I, can I borrow? Okay, look at this. You are my sister, and this is your cell phone, okay? And I arrived at your house, and then, oh, um, lady, c can I, can I, can I borrow your cell phone? Because I want to play some games, but look at my hands. I have your cell phone, right? The second, uh, lady, could I borrow your cell phone because I need to make a call? And then, okay, go ahead. May I borrow your cell phone, please, my little sister? You see what I'm saying? The first one is because I want to come across. Come across us. Because I want to come across, come across as a polite person. Solamente quiero dar la impresión de que soy una persona con modales, pero realmente no. Solamente por cumplir, o como diría mi mamá, ya porque en fin. Ok, ese can I borrow. Es ya porque en fin, ¿no? Can I es como cuando en la escuela, uh, uh, teacher, I don't know, teacher Pepito, uh, can I borrow, can I, can I go to the bathroom, please? Ya porque en fin, porque él no te puede decir que no. O sí te puede decir que no. No, that's weird. No, right? So, can I borrow? Could I is un poquito más formal. Y el may I is lo más formal que existe. Okay, siempre. In England, for example, you have to use this question. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, el may, el may, el may. Ahora, yeah. si quieres sonar, por ejemplo, como, I don't know, have you ever watched El Chavo del Ocho? Yes. yes. Do you remember Doña Florinda? Le gustaría pasar. Le gustaría usted? pasar. A yes. Ese le gustaría. For example, for example, look at this question. Empecemos con un. Do you mind? Do you mind? After mind, mind es o, mind es otro verbo que vamos a agregar aquí que después de mind se va con ing siempre. Entonces, por ejemplo, como le diría, te importaría. Cerrar la puerta. 
como digo, do you do you mind? Do you mind closing the door? Ok, mi pregunta es, mira, le digo a Pepito, Pepito, uh, do you mind closing the door? Who is going to close the door? Me or Pepito? Pepito. Pepito. Ok, now look at this question. Would you mind? Would you mind? If I close the if door. If I close the door. Who is going to close the door? Me or Pepito? Me. Me. What is the difference? Now look at this one. Do you mind if I close the door? Who is going to close the door? Me or Pepito? Me. Me again. But look at the difference between this and this one. What is the difference that you use? The past. Post. Post. The past form. Okay. Este, would you mind? Está al nivel, se puede decir hasta un poquito más que el may. La primera es, ¿podría yo tomar prestado su celular? Si te digo con el would sería... Uh, would you mind if I borrowed your cell phone? Es como, ¿le importaría si es que yo tomase prestado su celular? El otro es, do you mind if I borrow your cell phone? ¿Te importa si tomo tu celular? Este, do you mind if I close? Estaría el nivel de un could I borrow. ¿Te parece? A ver, lo voy a cambiar. Aquí le voy a poner un borrow. Aquí le voy a poner otro borrow. Con ed. Aquí le voy a poner, do you mind, nada más. Lo voy a poner ahora acá arribita. Está el mismo nivel, así lo voy a dejar en orden. En niveles de, de cortesía le voy a poner aquí. Entonces, en niveles de cortesía, como puedes ver, mira. Es can, luego sigue un could, luego sigue un do you mind if I borrow, luego may I borrow, would you mind if I borrow the, do the door, the cell phone. Ok. Did you understand? Yes. Yes. Entonces, en lugar de decir, por ejemplo, please, do me a favor, dile algo como, well, would you mind doing me a favor? ¿Puedo volver a la, a la anterior, por favor? This one? Eso. What? ¿Por qué son diferentes niveles y están como... Como diciendo casi, do you mind, could you mind? Ah, el, el, la diferencia de niveles es do you. Ah, uh, I don't understand. Ah, ¿cuál es la diferencia de, se podría decir entre un could you, sea, do you mind? El, ah, ¿por qué el nivel de diferencia entre do you mind if I borrow your, your cell phone and could you mind if I borrow the cell phone? Ah, ¿por qué, el, ah, ¿por qué este es más, más, más polite que este? Uh -huh. Ah, porque por la traducción, esto se traduce como, mira, el do you mind es, ¿te importa si tomo prestado tu celular? Aquí voy a poner, si tomo prestado tu celular, mira, ¿te importa? Y la otra es, ¿le importaría a usted si es que yo tomase prestado su celular? Ok. 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 Of course, aquí es como que estoy creando una situación hipotética, ¿no? ¿Le importaría a usted si yo tomase prestado su celular? Una situación hipotética porque estoy en el pasado. Por eso es más formal. En cambio, acá mira. Borrow. Uh -huh. ¿Ah? Yes. Okay. Entonces aquí en lugar de decir, please do me a favor. Hey, do you mind doing me a favor? Do you mind doing me, doing me a favor? Porque hacer un favor es do me a favor. Ok. So look at the example. I need to borrow your computer for a moment. Ah, order me, acá le cambiamos. Could you do me? Utiliza el could. May I borrow your computer? May I? Te acabo de decir que el may es la forma más polite. Y mira aquí la siguiente. Would you mind ordering me an oatmeal a tea? Y no te olvides del please, ¿no? For example, in the UK, a todo lo que tú puedas, please, please, es la palabra que más se repite en the UK. Yes. But in American English, American English, in the U.S., we say, all right, or like. Allá se repite más el like y el all right al finalizar cada palabra. Any questions okay. up to this point? Siempre tratemos de sonar más polite, especialmente en el trabajo. No, si no vas a caer mal a la gente. Of course. Another, any questions up to this point? No. 
looks crystal clear. Next. Now, part two. Frases para concertar una reunión. Imagínate que hay algún tema incómodo del que necesitas hablar con un empleado. Ahora recuerde que se llama colaborador o clerk. También hay que ver los términos. Ya no se dice empleado. Sí, fue un error mío. Y quieres concertar una reunión. Hay el típico, I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you. Si no quieres espantar a nadie, el truco es sonar menos directo y más educado. Cambiar el presente al pasado. Y si quieres mostrar tu lado más amable y afectivo, entonces use el past simple y el past continuous y los verbos wonder and I hope. Look at this one. Carlos, I want to have a word with you after lunch. Yeah. I want to review the quarterly goals. Yes, no problem. Come to my office at 4 p.m. and we can talk about it. Lo que yo pienso es que me van a votar. No me dicen, necesito hablar contigo. Oh, no. Yes, I want to have a word with you. I want to review. Quiero revisar, dice. Come to my office. Mejor, Carlos, I wanted to have a word with you after lunch. Okay. I was hoping to review... I was wondering if you could call my office around 4 p.m. Yo sé que vas a tener que ir, sino que para sonar un poco más, como te digo, el report es important, ¿ok? Para generar ese trabajo en equipo, esa confianza. Entonces utilizo una, I was wondering if, ya lo vimos en la clase de indirect questions, que vimos creado la clase anterior. I was wondering if you, I was hoping to review, I wanted to. Por ejemplo, si tú dices I want, I want to study, es como quiero estudiar. Y I wanted to study es quisieras estudiar. I wanted to have a word with you lo traduciría en el pasado como uh, quisiera hablar contigo. O oh, me gustaría. I would like to, to have a word with you. Esa es una mejor expresión, ¿no? I would like to have a word with you. Have a word means to talk. And I was hoping to and I was wondering if another I mean, another grammar that you can use if you want to create or build a report, okay? Okay, next one. That's really important too. Frases para solicitar información en una reunión. Si tienes memoria de pez como yo, eres un poco despistado, seguro que te ha pasado que conoces a alguien en una reunión y a minuto ya no te acuerdas su nombre. Sorry, Mr. Bartlett, what's your first name again? Philip Sidney. That's Philip with double L. Philip Sidney Bartlett. Is Sydney like the city in Australia? No, it's my grandmother's. Oh my goodness, where's my charger? Okay, now it's better. Uh, name is spelled S I D N E Y. So, in lugar de decir, what's your first name again? What did you say your first name was? ¿Te acuerdas in the questions? What did you say your first name was? Otro error que hay es que dicen, uh, Lady, what happened? What? What? Is like, well, if you, for example, if your mother speaks English, and you say, what? It's disrespectful. <laughs> Or when your teacher is like, okay, three plus three equals six. What is this respectful? In English, we use this expression. Let me share my screen. Where is Google? Ah, it's here. I'm sorry. Can you see my screen, right? We go to Cambridge. Yeah. Cambridge Dictionary. And we write this word, pardon. Pardon me. Oh, pardon me, of course. Pardon me. Oh, my goodness. Where is this? <laughs> Pardon me for breathing. Yeah, there are people nowadays that use that expression. Pardon. Pardon. Where is pardon? Of course. Used to politely ask someone to repeat something they have said because you did not hear it. Did you understand? Yes. Sure. Well, I need to reshare the computer because I cannot see. Now I think you can. Okay, so instead of saying what, you can say pardon me or pardon. Can you see my screen? Uh oh. Yeah. There's a problem with my computer. I cannot. 
again. Take your time. Okay, now I can. Let's continue. Okay. Okay, so remember you can use indirect question like, where's the bathroom? Uh, could you tell me where the bathroom is? So I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to paraphrase. Okay? Like, remember this one? El, do you mind? El, could you help me? Do you remember this expression? So we're going to practice. Yes? Well, lady, uh, do you have a you do you have an extra charger, please? Well, you are going to say this expression to someone else, okay? Do you have an extra charger, please? What would you say instead of saying, do you have an extra charger, please? Tú le dices, ¿tienes otro cargador extra por aquí? I'm wondering if you have an extra charge. An extra charge, yes. An extra charger, yes. But instead of saying, I am wondering, you can say, I was wondering. I was wondering. Uh, okay. Yes. I was wondering if you have an extra charger. I was wondering if you have an extra charger. Yeah, that's amazing. And of course, well, to be honest, I realize that people prefer to say this in Spanish and also in English. I don't know about you, but I say, for example, oh yeah, de casualidad no tienes... Well, I would say like, A, uh, do you happen to have a pen, for example? A, do you happen to have a pen, an extra pen? De casualidad, ¿tú tienes un lápiz extra? Un lapicero extra? Do you happen to have? Do and, you happen and, to have? Yes, and an extra charger. But in this case, because you want to like get along very well with everyone in the office, you can say, Hey, I was wondering if you happen to have. Look at this. I was wondering if you happen to have an extra pen for me. Because I can write. And it's really difficult to type or whatever. Did you understand? Yes. So I was wondering if you happen to have. That's another one. Hey, um... Where is the report? El mal jefe soy yo, tú eres la buena, lo cambias. Where is the report? What would you say? Mm. Mm, I was hoping to, to know where is the report. I was hoping to know where is the report? Oh, I was hoping to know where the report is. Uh, where the report is. Yes, or you can say, no, like, hey, where is that report? No, no, it says bossy. So, no, hey, um, I was hoping to check, but I don't know where the report is. Or you can say, hey, could you tell me, could you tell me when the report is set? Well, that's another expression that we use. Like, for example, okay. when something is set means... Something is ready. Okay. Okay. You can say, of course, a um. You can say, well, I'm all set. I'm all set. Yes. Tomorrow. In our next lesson, we are going to practice with Harry Potter, if I'm not mistaken. La próxima lección. Do you like Harry Potter or do you prefer another yeah. movie? No. Yeah, I it's like okay. It. We're gonna practice with Harry Potter. Okay, we have this expression. Remember, Amelson. The English of Harry Potter is still British. British, of course, it's British because we need we can understand yeah. everyone. Okay, Amel set uh, means I'm ready. I'm ready. Amel set. Are you ready to take the exam? Amel set. But also, it means like for example, when you go to your grandma's house and. You, for example, hey, do you want to eat tacos? And then, uh, I'm all set, I'm all set, I'm, I'm not starving. I'm all set is como cuando te invitan algo y dices, guacara, no quiero comer. No, no te preocupes, estoy bien como estoy. Todo eso significa I'm all set. No te preocupes, estoy bien como estoy, no necesito nada. Y también significa estoy listo. De repente alguien te invita, okay. oye, prueba, prueba este pastel que acabo de preparar y tú ves que sus manos están súper cochinas, súper dirty. 
no, I'm all set, I'm, I'm all set. set. Ese I'm all set se traba a decir como, ya comí, ya comí, no te preocupes, estoy bien como estoy, no te molestes. Did you understand? Yes. yes. I think we have another one, or... Yes, and the last one. Frases para pedirle a alguien que te espere, no solamente para el cliente, ¿ok? It says, please wait a minute or wait a minute. Can you step aside for a moment? No. Bear with me one minute. Please bear with me. Well, bear with me and, well, in a common setting or a, in informal context would be like, uh, entiéndeme. Ok, imagínate que yo me están explicando inglés. Ok, Carlos, we have to use the past perfect, but I don't understand the past perfect. So please, bear with me. Bear with me. Tenme paciencia. Entiéndeme. Ponte en mi lugar. Bear with me. En ese contexto se usa. Por ejemplo, veo que te estás demorando en realizar unos cálculos. Y te digo, hey, please, the reports. And please, bear with me. Entiéndeme. Tenme paciencia. Ok. Como soportame, porque bear significa soportar. Pero bear with me se traduce como tenme paciencia, entiéndeme. Okay. And of course, as I said before, you say, can you step outside for a moment now? Could you please? Could you please? Yes. Uh, frases para mostrar desacuerdo, of course. Si crees que alguien ha metido la pata para no sonar demasiado directo o contundente... Un truco es usar palabras como quite, que vimos en la clase anterior, quite, slightly, a bit, and a little. Otro truco es hablar en tercera persona. Por ejemplo, 10,000 pounds for the office supplies and the creations? That wasn't the idea I had. Esa no era la idea que tenía. En lugar de decir, esa no era la idea que tenía, mejor di, that's not quite what I had in mind that's not that's not quite what I had in mind that's not quite what I had in mind that's not quite what I had in mind that's not what I had in mind that's not quite that's not quite what I had in mind yes or, I don't see, look at this one, I'm worried about. Instead of saying, I'm worried about, you can say, I'm slightly concerned. Slightly concerned. And this is what I like a lot, because I use this expression all the time and every day. I think you've made a mistake. Mayormente cuando damos feedback, podemos decir, creo que has cometido un error. Mejor le digo, mm hmm. It looks like there might be a little bit of mistake here. It looks like there might be a little bit of a mistake here. Parece que hay un, un error pequeño aquí. Okay? Any questions about these expressions? No. Next one. Frases para disculparse por un retraso. Te han encargado un proyecto y se te pasó el deadline, so cámbiale los términos negativos por positivos. En lugar de decir, sorry, I know I'm late. Thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> yes. You, you have to change. You have to paraphrase the words. Thank you so much. It wasn't my intention, but whatever. I will never do that again. I promise. This is what you have to do. Next. ¿Cómo deletrear en el teléfono? Si tu trabajo implica hablar por teléfono y quieres sonar poco profesional, debes conocer el Native Phonetic Alphabet. Sí o sí. En inglés es absolutamente un must. No quieres hacer el ridículo que hice yo hablando por teléfono en inglés. So, let's continue. Uh, yes, the name of our office manager is Paco. That's P for potato, A for afternoon, C for chicken, and O for ostrich. Ostrich? ¿Sabes lo que es ostrich? Nope. Look at this. No, I want to see the picture. 
uh, stretch. This is like avestruz. Uh -huh. You see it? Y nostril es otro rol. No sé por qué se confunden austral con nostril. Es las fosas nasales. Ok. Yes, entonces, okay. en lugar de usarle P, I don't know, F, the frog, uh, whatever, C de casa, D de dado, like Spanish, tendríamos que usar el, el, el negro alphabet, phonetic alphabet. So P, you, you, you can say, for example, like, that's P, Papa, or A for Alpha, C for Charlie, or O for Oscar, Okay. You can find about the native phonetic alphabet here. Native phonetic alphabet. There is a chart and you can learn all of them, of course. Para deletrear más que todo, if you work in a call center, you are supposed to know this. For example, we have A alpha, así como Rosalia. A alpha, B bravo, C Charlie, D delta, E echo, G gold, H hotel. Okay. He has the native phonetic alphabet. Any questions? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, uh, for, example, hey, can, for example, if you say, well, I need to make a complaint because I don't like this product. Okay, please, can you tell me, I don't know, the identification of your name, please? And then you say, well, my name is Lady. Lady? Lady? And can you spell, please? Ah, uh, Lady, you say L for... Lima, E for eco, and then you can start speaking, okay? Let's okay. continue. A frases para disculparte ante un error. You say, I assume that you wanted to cancel your country with us when you said that you were going to find better bank. You say, my understanding was... And look at this. Si trabajas de cara al público en inglés, antes o después te tocará enfrentarte a alguien enfadado. Don't panic. Recuerda que lo último que quieres es darle a entender que el cliente ha tenido que ver nada con el error. Es mucho mejor darle a entender que has malinterpretado la información y eso te ha llevado a cometer el error. Entonces, siempre usamos my understanding was... Siempre en los call center, cuando llamas, te van a decir, well, my understanding was that you wanted to, to, to close the deal, that you wanted to stop the service, and they use this expression a lot. My understanding was. You got it? Yes. Yes. So for tomorrow, I will send you a link with the evaluation. It would be great that you can practice this expression. These are on this page. From 135 to 138. Okay? Did you understand? Tomorrow at... What, is your, what time is your exam? 3 p.m. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'll send the link with the evaluation. Okay? okay. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. You just have to select the answer. You have a timer. Don't worry about that. I will explain everything in the evaluation. Okay? It's not a Word document. You have to just click the buttons. Okay? So that would be all. Do you have any questions before we close the meeting? No. Today we learned a lot of difficult words. I understand they're difficult, but they're really important in our daily life. So that would be all. In a few minutes, I'll send a video. And that would be all. Bye bye. Take care. See you and well, Thank you. in our next class, of course. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Thursday. Bye. Thursday. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.